Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Logical Equivalence. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. By the end of this video, you should be able to show that two formulas are logically equivalent, and you should be able to prove that a statement is a tautology or a contradiction. We'll say what all those words mean in this video. Our motivation is that there are usually many ways to express the same thing. And we want to know when two things are expressing the same mathematical information. Here's our formal definition. If A and B are two mathematical statements that are made up of P statements and Q statements and logical connectives like AND and OR and things like that, then we say that A and B are logically equivalent if A and B have the same truth values for all choices of P and Q. Put another way, a and B might be slight, uh, they might look a little bit different. They might have, some of them might have ands and ors in weird places, but if they always have the same outputs, no matter what P's and Q's you put in, then that will say that A and B are logically equivalent. Let's look at some examples to help clarify this. The simplest one is that P is logically equivalent to not not P. From the video on truth and falsity, we saw how to define not P. So given these inputs of, of P, then not P does the opposite to them. It turns true to false and false to true. Now let's apply not to not P. In this case, we've already computed not P in the second column. So now we need to, to apply the not to the second column. So not of false will be true and not of true will be false. So we've just computed not not p, and now we compare it to the column for p, and we see that these two columns are the same. So since column one, which is the truth values of p, and column three, which is the truth values of not not p, are identical, we say that p and not not p are logically equivalent by the definition. So for all possible inputs of P, you get the same outputs. Let's look at a more sophisticated example. P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. To do this, we will compute all possible outputs of P implies Q and we'll compute all possible outputs of not Q implies not P, and then we'll compare their outputs. This proof technique is called a truth table. We use a table um, not because we formally have to, but because it helps us organize our information and helps us see what's going on step by step. So in order to compute the outputs of not Q implies not P, we'll have to go fairly slowly. And along the way, we will compute not Q, we'll do that right here. We'll compute not P, we'll do it right here. And then we'll remember how the implication operator works. So we'll look at how these things go. So let's start by computing P implies Q. This should be review from a previous video. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. That's the weird one. And then if the premise is false, then you automatically get true. Now let's compute these two columns, which are needed to get to the one we actually care about. These are sort of helper columns. So if we negate Q, this becomes instead of true, false, true, false, it becomes false, true, false, true. Similarly, if we negate P, P is right here, this first column. So this becomes false, false, true, true. And now we go through the implication. This one's a little more finicky because for each of them, we have to think, does false implies false, what does that give us? True implies false, what does that give us? We have to go through all of them. Well, the only weird one is when we have true implies false. So true implies false gives us false, and then all the other ones will be true. So you can go through one by one. 
Now, since column three, which are the truth values of P implies Q, and column six, which are the truth values of not Q implies not P, since these columns are identical, then P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Formally, our proof only needed to show that these outputs and these outputs were the same. This part right here isn't formally needed for our proof, but it's helpful for us to see um, how to actually build these things. You could have jumped straight to this if you wanted to, but it's easier to make a mistake. Since this is logically equivalent to the implication, um, we give it a special name. We call it the contrapositive. So not Q implies not P is called the contrapositive of P implies Q. We'll see this later on in the course. Um, this is something that we're going to care about quite a bit. Let's look at a non-example. So two things that are not logically equivalent. Let's look at P implies Q and Q implies P. Let's compute their truth values for um, all the values of P and Q. And let's try to find an example uh, where they don't have the same output. So take a moment to compute this on your own and then see, is there a place where they differ? Here's P implies Q as normal. And then for Q implies P, we have to look backwards a bit. We're doing true implies true, which is true. False implies true, which is true because the premise is false. True implies false, which is the only weird one. That's the one that's false. And then false implies false, which is true. So there are the truth values for Q implies P. Now, are these two columns the same? No. And to show that they're not the same, we can look at, say, the second row, or we could look at the third row. So looking at the second row, that's where P is Q, P is true, and Q is false. Then we'll have P implies Q being false, right here. But Q implies P has a different truth value. It's true. So to prove that two things are not logically equivalent, we just need to find one assignment of truth values that make their outputs different. Now, in the previous case, we did have something that was logically equivalent to implication. Here we don't. And this example, Q implies P, or this construction, is called the converse. And the converse is not logically equivalent to the implication. This is a common mistake students make. Now, this isn't going to be the way that you will remember it. You're not gonna remember the truth tables of these things um, intuitively. So here's a human example for you. If it rains, then it will be wet, is a true statement. But this is definitely not the same as, if it is wet, then it rains, right? You could be uh, watering your garden or something, and that will make it wet, but it didn't rain. So changing the order of an implication uh, will change the statement itself. Finally, we have two special cases. As an exercise right now, please compute the truth tables of the statements P and not P, as well as the statement P or not P. So fill in this data. Once you've done that, you'll see true and false is false. False and true is also false. So in this particular case, all of the outputs are false. Now, if you do the or instead, one of them is always true. So the whole or statement is true in both cases. So these special cases are where all of the outputs are false and all of the outputs are true. So we give those special names. Since P and not P is always false, we call it a contradiction. And the or statement is always true, so we call it a tautology. We'll use these throughout the course. 
as an exercise for you. Which of the following statements are contradictions? Which of them are tautologies? And which of them are neither? So P implies Q, P implies not P, or the final one is not Q or Q implies not Q and Q. Let's take some time to reflect. Why might someone prefer to use the contrapositive of an implication instead of the original implication? What benefits does that have? What happens when you take the contrapositive of the contrapositive? What do you get? Construct your own tautology and contradiction. Do we need brackets when referring to brackets P implies Q brackets implies R? Or is this the same as a putting the brackets on Q implies R? In English, why would someone say, I'm not not eating cookies right now, instead of, I'm eating cookies right now? Thank you very much, and have a good day.